Here today with a, another gr group threat video for an SHF scenario. Now, this one is something I know a lot of people think about, and this is localized government. Now, I know a lot of people like to talk about high-end government conspiracies and all, th all that kind of stuff, but I'm going to try to keep it down to just four very simple points. The first one is going to be in an SHF scenario after some type of event has happened is the power of authority. They're going to have a pretty good power of authority depending on what the situation is, how far stretched they are, but they are going to have a sense of authority over the standard citizen. So the standard citizen is going to semi-obey up to a certain point a, a power of, well, the type of government that's going on. So they're going to listen to the local law enforcement and tell it there's an overall full collapse and things get out of hand to the government. But the government is going to try to maintain its power over the citizens for as long as it can until it goes to the point to where both the citizenry and the people working for the government no longer have that benefit of working for the government. There's no benefit to doing it. There's no benefit. They want to stay with their families. But in a lot of different types of SHF scenarios, even very catastrophic ones, the government still keeps and tries to maintain control even if it has to resort to very disastrous things disastrous things like you see in, over in Venezuela to where they're shooting the protesters that are starving in the streets. So that's just the thing and they, they can also bring in help from outside to help them keep and maintain that power and that power of authority. The next thing is going to be pretty much the remnants of, more, of normality and what I mean by that is people are going to try to strive to keep that sense of normalcy in their everyday life. Sure, things might be going to hell around them, but they're still going to try to keep keep themselves in that kind of calm nature that everything's going to eventually go back to normal, it's going to all be okay, when it might not be. And they're going to look towards help in that type of a situation, and that comes into the government and that government power of authority, like, like we've seen in, during in hurricanes that happen, like we see whenever there's large wildfires, earthquakes, things along those lines. Even in times of war, you see people needing and searching for help from the local governments. Even if the local government is the threat to them, they still look for help because they can't get help anywhere else and they can't rely on themselves because they haven't become self-reliant. So that's just one of the things that we have to watch for is that that sense of, of normality can actually get a very draw, down and drawback to the standard citizenry and they can actually cause that to turn on you preppers to where they might be asking people to look for people that have food, supplies, firearms, and those no, and those citizens that are looking for help and that trying to maintain that sense of normality might think that they're helping everyone when in fact they're they're not. They're just giving the the localized government that's that threat in the situation more power over them and more power over the other people. Now the next thing is probably going to be one of the biggest, and that's going to be the power of control over the land and resources. And what I mean by that is, is that they have the ability in the, at the t depending on what situation we're going at here, but they have a, a large control over the land and over what's coming and going into the area. So just saying that it might be civil unrest or something like that, they, they have control over the amount of food rations that are being distributed. They have, like for example with FEMA, and other things they have the control over what type of disaster aid is being distributed to and from where, who's getting that disaster aid, how much aid they're getting, and it can come to the point to where they can start doing door-to-door -door confiscations to the point to where they're going and confiscating people's food, water, farm animals, all those type of things, and even maybe taking control over the farmer's land and pretty much making that a government-owned institution to where that food and those resources on that farm are no longer the farmers, it's in control of the government. So, like I said, I'm not trying to go with the conspiracy land here, I'm just trying to say and to try to keep it in basic, standard, common sense stuff and that that's things that can't happen and have happened in the past. And just like we had happen b back in the um, mid-1900s to where they, were, they had everyone in the country in America turn over their gold. So, that's just one thing that can happen. The next one is going to be, it's kind of a, this one it kind of delves into more communities rather than the government, but it can happen at a government level, 
and that is political and religious conflict. Now, what do I mean by that? And this kind of goes back into, if you take a look at the history of China, for example, to where the government pretty much created an SHF scenario to where they were going and killing off all the dissidents of the Communist Party. To where any type of political um, opponent or political dissident, kind of like what you're seeing work its way up right now in America, to where the political strife between the two parties are so so strong that you have that any time there's a rally, it turns into a street brawl, and people are no longer going there with signs and ideas and trying to start a discussion. They're going there with baseball bats, shields, pepper spray, firearms. It's it's become to the point where eventually protests are going to turn into mini war zones, and for the fact, and they're throwing explosives now and other things like that. So that's just one thing that we have to watch for. And to, and just have to deal with that that's how things are going. And then it comes into the religious conflict to the point where a religious, a major religious party can take over a government and come into power and control. And this kind of happens very, very often in the Middle East where you have, for example, like um, in, in Iraq and Iran and Saudi Arabia to where you have the Shiites and the Sunnis fighting over power and that causes huge political strife between the two nations and it can even cause war and in of itself creating a SHF scenario much like you have going on right now in Iraq. So that's just the type of things and this can happen on a huge, huge scale to the point where you have multiple countries and not just on a small scale of localized but being on an international level. So that's why I feel like that's one of the big things. And in that, there's a kind of a subcategory that I just want to touch on just a little bit, is that the governments can create their own SHGF scenarios, which is why they are a, a, a semi-bigger threat here, is that, like I mentioned earlier, is that they can create wars, they can create strife inside their internal um, on a domestic level to the point where it's, it's damaging the citizenry, but they're still staying in power and maintaining that power of authority. And it might be they need to create that SHTF scenario to maintain that power of authority in, in that over the citizens. So I just, that's really it. It's just on those four points in that one subcategory there. I just wanted to keep it short and simple. I wanted to hear what you guys have to say about that, um, what you guys think about a localized government after a SHTF scenario, if you think even a localized government will remain in power after an SHF scenario because there's a lot of things that go on to it. So thanks for watching. Prepper 003 out.